911, what's the nature of your emergency? Welcome back to the Tactical Living Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Walton. And in today's episode, I'm going to share with you a time in my life when I was in the middle of Northern Africa in Morocco, completely naked with a stranger, and how this just might apply to you on a day-to-day basis. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy today's content. Clint and I are super fortunate to get to travel as much as we do. And When we went to Morocco, we kept hearing our tour guide and other people talk about a hammam. And as you listen to this, I'll explain it real shortly. What a hammam is, is essentially you use black African soap, which is black in color, and it has incredible holistic properties, and it's super exfoliating. And now here, um, at least in California, I see black African soap now all the time, and it could very well be that you know, I'm starting to pay attention to it and noticing it more than I had before. But we decided to see what it was like. And we booked an appointment for a massage and we decided to book an appointment for a hammam before we got a massage. And what happens, and apparently it seems much more natural to people that do this every day than it does for somebody who's never done it before, is you go into this dark, dark room and imagine a public bathroom. That's what it looks like. Only it's very, very dark. And the entire walls, the ground, everything is covered in stone. And there's these two tables there since we did a a joint one. It was just Clint and I. And we were asked to remove our clothes and to lay down in our our beds, essentially. And the woman, she didn't speak any English, but um, she comes in after we're laying there. And I remember as soon as I lay down on this stone bed, it was hot. And it is it is like dripping wet, hot, worse than a sauna inside of this little room. And these stones are just pr- protruding this heat entire inside of this entire room. And there's water everywhere. And this woman comes in, she closes the door, and she decides to come to me first. And mind you, I grew up pretty modest. And my mom raised me with what I believe to be a great deal of class. So it was incredibly uncomfortable to have this woman approach me while I'm laying there completely naked. There's no no towel, nothing like that. You do have, um, I believe there was a towel like wrapped up under my neck or something. But other than that, you're just naked in front of this stranger. And I remember feeling super vulnerable, but then going all in. um, I really learned to trust the process when it comes to committing to something and then just kind of embracing it and and trying to experience it. So she comes to me and she takes these these buckets and I notice that there's this fountain made out of stone that's built into the wall and she grabs this bucket and she keeps filling it up and she's, she's just taking bucket after bucket and she's pouring hot water over me and it was steaming hot. And then she goes over, does the same thing to Clint and she leaves and she comes back and she has her tools, like all of these things. And I later find out that she has this huge amount of this black soap and it's almost like it's in a, like a paste form and she starts to apply it to my body. And honestly, I I don't think she was even wearing any gloves. It was just her hands. And she starts out at my arm and she's kind of exfoliating it, just rubbing back and forth, back and forth. And I remember thinking, like, this is very weird, but I know that it's doing good things for me. So I continue to just roll with it and experience it. And I remember um, smelling it and, you know, just trying to experience what was happening in the moment. And, you know, she she does limb after limb. And then I'm, I'm wondering, like, what other parts in my torso, what, like, what is she going to touch? This woman is just, like, using her hands to touch me. And this is kind of weird, but... I just go with it and she was super professional and she comes up to my chest and my breast area and she just starts to exfoliate everything. And I think she might have sensed um, a little bit of my inhibition because she grabbed my hand and she put it up to my chest. And mind you, we don't speak the language of one another, but I understood what she was telling me to do. And she was asking me, she was asking me to feel to feel right there, to feel the area that my, my fingertips were on. And I remember wiping my fingertips across my chest and I could feel dead skin. It was absolutely disgusting, but I was just surprised. Like, 
how could I have that much dead skin just sitting on my chest like that? But this soap is absolutely magical. And I can go much into detail about uh, everything that had happened before. I believe I recorded an episode about it already, but you know, she eventually she rinses me off, we get our massage, and then we leave. And I remember after the fact, it was that night when I was getting ready to take a shower. And as I was brushing my hands across my own body, getting ready to, to soap up, you know, just putting the water all over myself, I remember thinking, like, my skin has never felt this soft before. And I am a very foo-foo girl in the sense of loving to just pamper myself. And, you know, I have a million different lotions and, and oils and things that I like to use, but never have I felt my skin. And it didn't even feel like it was my skin. It was almost foreign. And I remember thinking, if if my skin can feel this brand new you know, all of the time, then imagine how much better I would feel wearing my skin. We don't realize how different um, it can be until we've experienced something like that before. And it led me to, to think about how many times in my own life, and maybe as you listen to this, this has happened to you too, when we carry around so much extra stuff that we, we don't even realize. And one thing that comes up for me is um, like emails, right? How many times do we sign up for these crap emails just to get some free thing? And then we have to spend time every day deleting these emails from people that we don't care to read them from. And I started to, to realize how much of a micro distraction it is for us to have all of those little, those little cells, right? These little, um, dead cells running around our lives like that. And I started to think how many other things in my own life, and I'm sure this is applicable to you, that I can start to eliminate and kind of see things a little bit more clearly as a result. And going into Facebook and you know, getting out of certain Facebook groups that I'm not active in, unfriending people. Actually, I have software now that that does that for inactive people on my list, people that I don't engage with or just dead weight, right? And, you know, even our space, cleaning up my desk is something that's important to me before I get up from it every single time that I work because I like to come back to a clean space. It feels great when we're able to sit down and maybe it's the same for you when you're in your car or when you're getting ready to cook something in the kitchen and having a clean slate to start with already sets us up for success. And when we're able to recognize what those things are, I think it's super important to be able to understand how much more productive or how much more fulfilled we are in our day to day because of that one simple that one simple technique of being able to filter out all of the junk, right? If we go swimming, it's super hot. I don't know about you, but in Southern California right now, today we're expecting it to be 109 degrees. We have all of these air warnings and we're being asked not to go outside and just what we need, more restrictions and guidelines on our lives, right? But it's like swimming in a pool. We we always use this strainer. There's the, the pool person, or if you clean your own pool, there's a pool person that goes through and he uses that strainer to get all the big junk out. And then you have the, the internal filter for the pool to make sure that it's crystal clear and you don't have all of the debris and junk that you don't want dead bugs even floating around while you go swimming. And I don't think it's any different from our own lives if we're able to stop and, and recognize that. And I just wanted to share that with you as something that came up for me today. And I think that as I go about my own day, and I hope it's the same for you too, you'll try to recognize any of the things that you might see and pick up on that perhaps you can start to eliminate from your life. And even more so, pay attention to what happens on the inside, how good you feel as a result of being able to filter out, you know, some of the the dead stuff, some of the junk that doesn't serve you anymore. I shouldn't have been carrying around dead skin. You know, this is a, a vessel that I feel very privileged to be able to carry my soul in every day, just as it is the same for you. And when when I now understand the importance of, of not having those dead skin cells and the same as it applies in my life and in your life, then I think that it, it's it's really something that I can do and adapt to, we all can, to make it a little bit of a better living for us all. So no matter where you are right now, maybe you're driving to work, maybe you're at home, maybe you are done for the day, I am so happy if you are. Know that I'm sending you a big tight hug from my home to your home, and I hope that you have an amazing day.